Hello, my name is Len Schneider, and uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of things, but in the last few years, uh, I've been uh, building exact replicas of the 1880 Buckby banjo. This is the, the most recent one I made, just finished it a couple, couple of days ago. And this one, they're all the same except the plating that is different, just really for just appearance and preference. And uh, they, they each have their own attitude, it's amazing. Uh, most, most of them have been all silver, pretty much, and, and some of them are sort of a mix between some silver and some gold. But that's, that's not the important thing. Uh, it, it, this banjo is, is like, a, uh, it's like a key to, uh, to the 19th century, to really getting a feeling for what it was like. You know, it's a very golden, uh, great time. Some people, I, I think it's very similar to what was going on in France. They call it the Belle Epoque, you know, the, the days of the Moulin Rouge and Toulouse-Lautrec and the whole can-can scene and, and, it was, and building the Eiffel Tower. Um, I have a video about that on my website. There's a lot of information, so you should really take a look at my website. This is just, this, this, the purpose of this video is, I'll, I'll explain uh, in a second, but uh, the, uh, the website has a lot of information, a lot of examples of what could be done with this thing, like everything from, you know, well, its roots, like the Appalachian kind of, music and southern and minstrel music and that whole you know civil war era uh, but this was the transition between that part of america and into a more romantic modern you know 18 late 19th century kind of uh, thing and teresa vaughan who's i talk about her on my website she was like really important She's like the founding mother of American um, uh, uh, culture and music. She, she took us from that early music to the realm of uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein. Like they were, they, Hammerstein II was born right in the same town in New York City. With, Teresa was the main, the biggest star there in, in 1895. And that's when he was born there. So he kind of grew up in her world. And, and she knew the family because she played at the theaters of Hammerstein the first. So it's it's a it's a missing part of history, and it's a very colorful, great one. Uh, but by the way, talking about keys, uh, these these keys I'm building, I make I I've been having these keys cast and plated. This is bronze, and it's silver. Uh, I mean, it's, some of them are silver. This one is gold plated. And, and it's, you know, for, for tightening the, the, the banjo, adjusting the head tension. By the way, uh, the, the threads on these, on these rods, they're, not, they're, ni they're 19th century threads. I, I wanted this to be so exact, which is not musically important, but just the feeling of it. it and the way, you know, when you tighten it, it the, the how many turns to, to get so much tension. It's, it's a very well-designed system. That's, that's the whole point I, I'm trying to bring out in this video. I want to explain that this is sort of like a very iconic banjo at a major turning point in American history and culture and world culture. And it's got to do with that golden era. It, you can see the banjo has that that kind of magic to it, that sparkle and happy glitter and that whole thing. And people were very festive and they were all excited about, you know, the anniversary of Columbus and so on, you know, you know, 1892. And they had a lot of um, events, you know, commemorating that. And anyhow, it's very interesting. But so, but these banjos, th that's only half of the story. You know, it's historic and this and that. But the other aspect uh, is like, engineering it's a beautiful piece of engineering it's just so nicely made solid does the job nothing is a, a gram heavier than it has to be it's like a racing car the neck is as light as possible without it warping and 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 that that was not easy to do uh, buckby what he did was he made a very slight back bow 
you can't see it probably. It's very hard to see. If you put a straight edge, you can see the neck rises like a hill and then it reaches a peak around here and it starts going down. And then the neck is really thin, so thin that you would think that with steel strings it would warp it. And most people are terrified of putting steel strings on old banjos and some of them probably couldn't take it. But Buckby was a, like a great, great designer. I put him up there with Eiffel almost, you know, who was a great designer at that time. So this is the equivalent of a racing car in a sense. It's, look, how, look how it gets taped. It gets really thin here, thinner and thinner and thinner. And, and yet it's, it's strong enough because of that back bend. So as you tighten the strings, if anything, you may just straighten the neck, but it doesn't matter. It turns out to have a very nice effect. The height of the strings sort of starts finding more and more space uh, between the string and the neck. And it, it, when you're playing, there's a lot of advantages to that in the way it sounds. It's, it's very interesting. Anyhow, uh, the other thing I wanted to... In re, so from an engineering point of view, it's like really... Uh, uh, like. It, like the, to me, it's the equivalent of a, a Grand Prix car or, or Indianapolis race car or something. I mean, it's really, this is the beginning of America that we know, you know, but most people don't know that this part of America. And this, this give you a little perspective, Jesse James was doing his thing at the time the, these were being developed here. Uh, I just, you know, and then Tesla was kind of getting ready to do his stuff. I mean, it was a very interesting time. Um, anyhow, uh, but the, the last thing I want to show you is the, the way this thing sounds, and and uh, shall I illustrate the um, the different kinds of sounds and the voices and different uh, ideas about it. Like for the simplest thing and, and the oldest idea goes back to Teresa Vaughan's time. You can take a look at my website, TeresaVaughan.com. T H E R E S A. V A U G H N dot com, and there's a lot of information there. And I also have, I'll be posting a whole bunch of videos I made. There's a lot of songs I've done, everything from Appalachia and the early stuff up, up through Rogers and Hammerstein, and it, it's all part of the the evolution of this instrument. This is the one that came down from the hills, you know, like they say the Beverly Hillbillies. Well, this came down from the hills. And it went to Broadway and 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 really made a like a, a dent, you know. Anyhow, uh, so the early style was called frailing, and that was like a strum with your your nails just going going across the strings. And then it was an, a little extra thing was added that when you went down like that, it just dragged down, and you you get your thumb you get your thumb hooked onto the fifth string. That's another thing, the sound, the bells, it, it, it's very vocal. But anyhow, Frailing uses the fifth string to add a little sparkle and, and shine to the music. So like, the, the simplest example would be like a song which was popular then, uh, Oh Susanna. some single notes and some chords in there and uh, as I said you know, before I explained how, how it works but uh, the um, the thing is that uh, there's another aspect that's important I don't know if you noticed but you can get different tones like if you if you do the, what they call claw hammer where it's like vertical not strumming but vertical and you 
just catch the string with the edge of your nail and you can get that popping sound. And you notice the neck is flexible. And then um, um, the, uh, the, you get uh, uh, you can get a softer sound by using the fleshy part of the fingers, like the... fun with the banjo it's 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 like doing it not so much learning to play a song perfectly or doing anything just the enjoyment of learning and exploring and making mistakes because you, you can't get hurt you just can have a lot of you know make discoveries very interesting so anyhow that's just some of the things and then later on of course um, came uh, bluegrass which is a whole other story a little mechanical more modern more um, you know 20th century, 21st century, machine age, and you know, and lots of uh, like it's an eight beat roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, things like that, and with syncopations, it's nice. But, but what I like especially is the more romantic, poetic, dreamy stuff. Like, I, I have a nice version on the website. It took a while to get it straightened out, but it sounds pretty nice. It's the uh, from Oklahoma, you'll see it there. I'll, I'll put a list out of all my stuff, you'll see it. And uh, it was, people will say we're in love, you know, it's the one that goes. Site and um, I have like nice versions of some of these with with some backup MIDI's to add a little you know fill because it's like uh, it, sort of the MIDI's kind of take the place of a singer in a way and someday with luck there'll be a singer here but anyhow so I hope you enjoy it and uh, let me know if you have any questions or any, you want me to explain anything uh, uh, this I had one nice request about showing about the fingers and the sounds and the different things. Okay, have a good one. <laughs>